Hi, everyone. My name is Christine Villanueva. I am currently an intern at Storyful, which is a social media verification newswire. And uh, I covered the underground music community here in the greater New York City area. This is a community that is very close to my heart. Um, but before I get into exactly what I learned and what I did for my practicum, I first want to talk a little bit about who exactly is in my community. So the people in my community are typically artists and musicians who live and, some, and perform in uh, converted warehouses and factories that have been turned into music venues and galleries. Uh, the people in my community are also, also traditionally marginalized groups like the LGBTQA community, as well as uh, undocumented immigrants, women, and people of color. Uh, what kind of separates them from uh, other independent artists are the fact that they're very politically engaged, they're social justice oriented, and they have a willingness to start grassroots movements. Um, so that is very different from uh, YouTubers and buskers. I think one person who really describes what it's like to be at a DIY or an underground music space is it, it's similar to the difference of going to your friend's house for dinner versus um, going to uh, dinner with them at a restaurant. So I think that analogy is a really great way to describe the inclusivity that this community strives for. So how exactly did I listen to this community? Well, first and foremost, I, I want to say that I made sure that I was present in this community. I went to community meetings, I went to shows, and I just made sure that I was a presence there. I, I asked people, what are some of the things that you don't see covered that you would want to see covered? And I made sure to have human connections with them, first and foremost, before uh, being a journalist, which helped uh, really impact my, um, <clears throat> my work. And I also was able to figure out where people were meeting in real life and online. Um, which brings me to my next point, which is that follow-ups matter. So whenever I wrote a piece or I, I produced a video um, about something that someone had told me about or inspired by a conversation I had, I made it a point to shoot them a message. I made it a point to say, hey, here's a resource. I think this could help you or somebody that you know. And in that way, I was able to build relationships and build trust. And when I say that follow-ups matter, they really matter. People started sharing my stories. People started getting really excited about the work that I was doing. And that in part has to do with the fact that I relinquished some control and I invited people along for the ride. So what I did was I really let my community lead me. If we're going to recast journalism as a service, we need to allow for community feedback so that we will know some of the things that people want to know um, and report on the things that they want to know about. Uh, but not only that, we have to use the appropriate channels to ensure that our audience is actually getting the information that they need. Instead of throwing out uh, links on the social media ether, we really need to uh, strategize and make sure that the people that need to know the things we're reporting on know them. One example that uh, I did earlier in this year was I had a conversation with a recovering heroin addict who found her support system through the underground music scene um, despite the fact that drugs were present. I, I also was able to dispel some of the stereotypes behind the sex, drugs, and rock and roll uh, saying. And another piece that I did was about women in the punk scene. I think. Uh, a lot of women were telling me that they wanted more of an outlet. They wanted to address some of the issues with sexism in a male-dominated music scene. So I was able to kind of elevate their voices and their importance in diversifying the space. And as great as community-led stories are, your community can't tell you everything. And they're going to look to you for your journalistic expertise and news judgment to fill in some gaps in reporting that they wouldn't normally see. So a lot of this has to do with extraneous listening and finding those gaps and reporting on them. One example that I often cite uh, is about the legislation regarding the nightlife mayor, who is going to be the liaison between the nightlife industry and New York City Hall. So by covering some of these topics uh, regarding policy, people were able to be more informed and become um, better knowledgeable activists. Um, I also covered underground musicians as ex uh, experiencing hate in America, and I was able to take kind of those larger political stories and find, find out that they were relevant in, in this space also. 
And while at first I thought this story was going to be about uh, bands who are touring in more conservative parts of the country that were hailing from, you know, also liberal New York, I actually found out um, after I dropped the piece into a Facebook group that people didn't really need to leave their home states uh, or their little bubbles to face this type of discrimination. And by allowing for that feedback, I was able to add that extra layer to my reporting. So for my practicum, I did three different things. The first was a medium publication called Edge of Sound, which I showed you some examples of previously. But I also did an Instagram page and a zine. Um, a zine is essentially a, a handmade magazine. And I distributed 100 of them at a show in Brooklyn at a DIY space. Um, but there was a twist. Instead of, um, instead of printing whole articles, what I did instead was I printed partial articles and then prompted people to text in uh, a keyword so that they could get the full link to the piece, the piece of the full, ah, the link to the full piece. Um, and by doing that, I, I didn't want to rely on traditional print metrics to um, kind of measure that impact. I wanted to know what exactly in my zine people were reading and engaging with, and in that way I could inform my editorial process moving forward. So out of 100 people, guess how many text-ins I got? Zero. But that's okay. A lot of people said that this wasn't a bad idea. It just might have been kind of poorly executed. Um, but this all circles back to a point that I had made earlier, that being there actually matters. I was able to see uh, people interacting with my product. People were giving me really amazing and positive feedback. But I think that once band started playing, people got a little distracted and forgot to text in, even if they wanted to. So a huge thing that I learned um, by doing this type of work is that an extra step could be a huge leap for people. <laughs> uh, because you catch them at the wrong time. But not all hope is lost. Um, for Instagram, I used this as a supplement for the types of things I was writing in my zine and on Medium. And I had to envision what an Instagram article would look like. And at first, I thought it would be a synthesized version of the inverted pyramid or a basic news article. But that wasn't getting a lot of engagement. And by engagement, I, I mean likes. And I used likes as a metric for positive community feedback. Uh, I wasn't trying to get likes for likes sake, but I tried to find meaning behind them. And so I took that as a cue to kind of change the editorial strategy. And I you know, made my captions, a paragraph or two at most, ended with a strong quote or kicker. And uh, that ended up getting four times more engagement than um, before I had made these adjustments. And on Medium, I had a 41% average engage, um, engagement rate, which meant that 41% of my audience actually read through whole articles, which was pretty rewarding considering that most people will read only halfway through and six out of 10 Americans will only read headlines. Um, so what now? What I would do is I would get community feedback, I would make adjustments, I would reiterate my project and try again. I think a huge part of doing community engagement work in journalism is understanding that you might not get it right the first time, and that's okay. Um, so the only thing that you really need to do is move on from failure very quickly, and the only time you ever really fail is if you quit. Thank you so much. My name is Christine Villanueva. <laughs> I have physical copies of my zine with me, but you can check it out at bit.ly.com slash edge of sound. I'm on social at Christine underscore ish, and my email is right on the screen. <laughs> Thank you so much.